Hello, I'm Christopher Bayliss from Intergage Fast Growth. Thank you for downloading the workbook entitled Clarify Your Team Roles. Uh, clarifying team roles and organising for fast growth are crucial to any business leader who wants to achieve fast growth. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Bill Hill, a director of Keyzap, a growing company here in Dorset. Bill, thank you very much for giving your time uh, to work through me on this video tutorial on this workbook called Clarify Your Team Roles. It's a pleasure. Okay, the video is in two parts. One is we're going to look at the context for why this is important. And then afterwards, I'm going to share three or four tips and or hints on using the workbook. Uh, you've not used this workbook before, so you're like the viewer here. Yeah, it's, it's new to me. You'd me. Okay, the context and how this evolved. Years ago, and I've been uh, doing this kind of thing for 20 or 30 years now in both small and big companies, uh, my business partner at the time was working with a company on the whole question of clarifying team roles. And he looked at this particular company and he, he found out that decided that in that particular company they had about 50 to 60 different uh, activities that need to be covered off by the management team. Mm -hmm. And you can see here I've got a, a, a team of some playing cards. I'm going to put the joker to one side. That could be very confusing. Um, and what he did, he just got these only got plain ones and wrote down the various activities. Yep. Okay, so here might be design marketing plan, organised sales, organised production, uh, and mm -hmm. so forth. And this works just as well with production companies or people that produce things as well as service companies. So it had his, had his 50 activities, each on a, a playing card. And he's quite an innovative guy, my partner. And uh, he got the management team together. And this works just as well if it's a small company because Keys Up's only a couple of people, isn't it? It's not yeah. uh, at the moment, although it's going to grow very fast. And just remind me, what does Keys Up do? Uh, we actually produce web-based software for the lettings industry to manage keys. That's our first product. Mm, interesting. Um, and in, in the future, we'll expand that to other industries because it's actually an asset management mm. system. Mm. Well, good luck with that. Okay. Uh, I know you've got other interests as well. And you may find this process very helpful as you, mm. as you grow. Okay. So back to my partner. He had all these um, activities on the play, playing cards. Got the people. In this case, it was the management team. But mm -hmm. say it could have been the, could have been just the people who worked there and got them together and he said, right, I've got these activities and I'm just going to deal with them out randomly. Shuffled them and mm -hmm. dealt them out. So each person had eight cards each, say, yeah. for the sake of argument. Okay, so there's eight there, eight for me, eight, you know, eight there, etc. And then he said, right, have a look at your cards. Have a look at your cards, have a look at your cards. And look through them and decide which ones are definitely yours. Mm -hmm. Which ones do you think belong to somebody else around this table, and which ones you're not sure about? So if you thought that one was those were yours, say, but that ace of spades in this case it would be something was mine. You'd say, yeah. Christopher, I think this is yours. Okay. So okay, so you give it to me. I'd have to take it up. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and that one somebody else. Okay. okay. But there might be one, like in this case, the ace of clubs, or the other thing you're not yeah. sure of. So you put it in the middle. OK. And go around the table until everybody has, has decided which ones they want to keep for themselves, which ones they've assigned to somebody and, else. And if someone passes me one which I don't agree with, I can put it in the centre of the table. Property, yeah, yeah, it would be. OK. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. That's what all started, is a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. When they'd finished, after about half an hour, there was one there, one of the guys had 20 cards. <laughs> One guy with one card, <laughs> and there were at least 20 cards mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a clever guy. <laughs> well, maybe. What do you think the implications of that? A, that situation and that situation. It's a very unbalanced team. Very unbalanced, with somebody do, having too much to do, somebody with not enough. But what's the problem with this stuff in the middle? It's not being done. Hmm. Not being done, not being covered off. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Somebody said, you know, you should turn that into a workbook. 
and this is what this workbook is primarily about. Okay. Okay, you're not going to give playing cards, although you could use playing cards uh, uh, to do it, but uh, it's, it's, it's systematized it. And in preparation for today's video, I've been thinking about what this is really about. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to use an, a, a metaphor or an analogy from the building industry, okay. uh, from the tiling industry, putting tiles or slates on roof. Okay, have you ever done putting tiles on a roof? I've taken them off. Taken them off, but not putting them on. Okay. Uh, just so happens, I have a couple of tiles here. These are concrete tiles mm -hmm. going on your roof. Okay, a brand new roof or re reconditioned roof. And uh, we've not done, this. I've not done this before, tiling, so this is mm -hmm. new to me. I um, put the first tile like that, and the next tile like that, and the next like, tile like that, etc., etc. And these are pretty heavy. You can feel the weight of these. Yep. Yeah. What, what, what happens if I put too big an overlap on this roof? Well, first of all, you've got the wrong way around. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> just, just, this is true. Have you um, noticed that? Uh, too big an overlap, more tiles, extra weight. Extra weight, more cost. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my partner is just the opposite. He likes to save money mm -hmm. and he puts his like this. And then you get leakages. Yeah, you get leakages. And that's a bit like, like these part tiles here, these things in the middle. You, you want some overlap, obviously, mm -hmm. but if you have too big a gap, things yeah. happen. All right? Makes sense? Brilliant. Very good. So this is about getting balance in terms of roles. And also about getting just enough coverage. Makes sense? Yes. Very good. Okay. What I'd like to do now is just go through the workbook that you have in front of you. You have one. And just mention three or four tips. But before we do, could you just read the the, the purpose um, out loud to the camera for us? The purpose of this workshop is to assist you clarify your own and your team's roles. A person's role is a set of specific activities for which he or she is he or she is responsible. The goal is that you agree with your team who should be responsible for the specific activities in running a growing running and growing your company. A second goal is for you and your team to agree the mutual help needed in your roles. As a result, by working with clearer roles and agreed mutual help, you have a very strong foundation for the fast and sustained growth in your company. Thank you for reading it. Now today we're just going to concentrate on agreeing the roles rather than mm -hmm. the mutual help, but that yep. is actually a secondary and just as important part of this workshop. It is a workbook, this is a workbook, but do run it as your team as a workshop. Um, of the 50 workbooks, most, I suggest as business leaders, you do on your own, mm -hmm. and they take about an hour. This one, probably, you need to do with your team over a couple of different sessions. It probably will take you about three hours. But if you link it in with organizing your company for fast growth, the one we looked at, mm -hmm. it's very, very powerful. Can you see that? Yes, very good. Mm. So, quite a long workbook, and there are four specific hints um, that I just want to mention. If you turn to page one, Bill, what's a strategic problem? Um, as it says at the top, in many companies, there is confusion amongst the management team about who is responsible for the many activities in running and growing the business. Yeah. And as a consequence, the roles of the managing director and the individual managers, team members is, is, are unclear. The results in is key activities falling through the cracks. Remember the, yeah. the water going through the slates or the tiles, resulting in customer satisfaction and staff frustration. The serious outcome of is often low productivity, poor morale and slower growth. And we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> so that's really setting the context. On page two, we talked about activities. Um, from this research we've done over the last 10, 20 years, this, there are about eight major groups of activities in a company, ranging from strategy, product service development, marketing, sales, clients, customer service, operations, people and resources, and finances and profitability. They're not ranked in any order, but those are the things uh, which are the major activities. And then on the following pages, for each of those, there's a list of activities that has been developed over the years. So if you turn to page 3.3, uh, there's the activities built for marketing. Okay, can you see that down the, down the left-hand side? Some of them, I think, go over to two pages, but you just read a couple at the top there. Number one, building, managing and protecting your brand value. 
Number two, analyzing market data and organizing customer research. And number three, managing your digital marketing and monitoring social media. And the, what it says at the very top here under marketing, the, the, the purpose of this, this major activity of marketing, is attracting uh, your profitable customer and clients. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So f the first thing is to look through uh, those eight major categories, look through the proposed um, subcategories, if you like. Uh, so eight times eight is about 64 different activities. That's like the playing cards yep. uh, that we talked about earlier on. Makes sense? Yes, sir. And, and unusually in this, in this situation, bear in mind you've, got, you've already decided the organisation, and this is a company where you want to get highly motivated and empowered people, then saying to yourself, who is currently responsible? Mm -hmm. It's a bit like the playing cards thing. Yeah. Then unusually, who wants to be responsible? Mm -hmm. And then finally, as a management team, who should be responsible? This is not forever, and things change, but actually having that debate. Certainly, yeah, and, and, and the solution now might be different to the solution in a few months' time. Exactly, nothing lasts forever. Um, through the workbook, there's different processes to, to get to the next stage, but often involving yellow post-its. Uh, I don't have shares in 3Ms, um, but I do recommend them, because once, you, once you've got these things on post-its, you can move them around. Some people actually go, to, go as far as actually produce their own playing cards and do that. But eventually, for an individual, in this case it might be your, your, you the, as a director of Keys Up, you get your name and the, 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 those activities that you've said, that, that you've agreed with the team that you should be responsible. I'm on 4B here, page 4B. So this is like you, yep. Bill Hill. Uh, these are all the activities. Group them under some headings. Yep. Uh, so you, that's my that's my role. That's my envelope of things I'm responsible for. Makes sense. Yes. Um, now, obviously, Keys Up is a fairly small company. Those activities need to be covered off, and it could be that between a couple of you, you've got maybe twenty or so activities. Yeah, our experience is mm. that everyone has to cover the activities somehow, one way or another. Yeah, and yeah. as you grow, hopefully, as you get um, people like func you know, functional managers and other people, it'll narrow down. Okay. Okay. So that's an important thing. And when you've done that, the final p p page uh, that I would mention before moving on to the mutual help is page five, which is entitled Build Your Matrix of Responsibilities for Specific Priority Business Activities. So you, of all the ones you, you're responsible for, which are, which are the priority ones? There might be four or five, and your colleagues might be four or five. So you put them down here, and then you put the initials against them. And it's a very simple little matrix in saying who is responsible for what. Make sense? Okay. And then when you've done that, move on to things like the mutual help you require. Okay. So this workbook, really useful, crucial to the success of a company. Um, have a bit of fun doing it. Remember the playing cards? Uh, remember the the the, um, the slates. Uh, bear in mind you can't afford to uh, to have too many too much overlap, but you certainly can't afford to have gaps. Yeah. And do it for every year or so. Uh, and as a business leader, it's something like deciding the organisation and clarifying roles is probably the most important thing that any business leader needs to do. So, Bill. Thank you for giving your time today to work on this particular workbook. I'd love to ask, as you grow in Keys Up, will you use this particular workbook? Oh, absolutely. We'll use it straight away because uh, I actually see some areas already that I need to manage. Mm. And some, some of us are encroaching on each other's jobs. Mm. Super. Well, good luck with that. And good luck with the, uh, with the growth, the exciting growth of Keys Up. Thank you.